The big point I'd like to make is that our problem here in the United States and elsewhere is a fiscal problem. It is a debt overhang problem of biblical proportions. Um, and it, 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 if you will allow me the uh, prototype of a financial crisis, I've looked at many financial crises in my uh, work over the course of many years, and the prototype is a financial innovation or liberalization occurs. This leads to a boom in borrowing. And during that boom period where economic activity is strong, where credit is, is ample, asset prices boom. Uh, and uh, during that period is actually where monetary policy could sink teeth in to prevent the leverage problem. I concur very much with what was said that the leverage problem is the essential problem more than the asset uh, prices. So that, I would characterize that first leg as a surge in private borrowing. Surge in private borrowing, the crisis occurs. As the crisis occurs, fiscal finances deteriorate markedly irrespective of whether you have bailouts or whether you have stimulus packages, revenues suffer a great deal, fiscal finances deteriorate, and they also deteriorate because what were private debts before the crisis start becoming public debts after the crisis, and the government's balance sheet begins to expand at a dramatic rate. Nowhere more is that more evident than in Ireland, which was a country that had very, by any metric, international standard historically, had very modest government debt to GDP, had very uh, solid footing in its fiscal finances, and now we're looking at 30 percent deficits to GDP, which are pretty unheard of uh, for, for that country, certainly. Uh, and large by any historic metric. So uh, we go from a surge in debt that is predominantly private to a surge in debt that is predominantly public. And now we just have the aftermath of a surge in debt. Uh, and so the, the question of monetary policy, I, without any, you know, I'm married to a former central banker and so on, but without it, due respect, monetary policy is really a second tier problem here uh, relative to the massive debt overhang issue uh, that we are facing. And the question is, of course, when you have a big debt overhang, historically, it has been dealt uh, by three ways. One is plain good luck, and you grow your way out of it. Good luck. Uh, that outcome is rare. Uh, the second is you deal with the debt problem through a combination of debt restructuring, if not outright default, and uh, fiscal uh, austerity. That is not pretty. In effect, none of the outcomes except the low probability growth one are pretty. Or you indirectly uh, use monetary, very accommodative monetary policy to inflate away part of the debt liabilities, uh, which was also very effectively done, if I may add, in the aftermath of World War II uh, in not just the United States, but the UK, which had debt to GDP ratios of over 230 percent. So what, what do we do, what did Vincent and I do in this paper? Vincent Reinhardt and I, uh, um, to re to take a summary of our policy stance is, um, on our policy stance, we would say that uh, as far as targets, asset prices are th something that should be watched, but that the real killer, the real emphasis of policy should be on leverage, debt cycles. Debt cycles are the constant recurring feature of financial crises. Um, and that is what gets us into trouble and with a long, dark aftermath. Uh, now, instruments of monetary policy, I th and we will argue this in the second and almost last part of my presentation, which is um, there is the issue of short-term interest rates as being the wherewithal 
of monetary policy. And we, be, we basically want to get too much for too little. This is a common problem. You know, you want to uh, uh, have uh, too few instruments for too many targets. And I think the, ba the basic message that we would suggest is that if monetary policy is going to be used towards crisis prevention, uh, looking beyond short-term interest rates and being very old-fashioned. I mean, the old dead things like margin requirements uh, that haven't really been used uh, counter-cyclically. Uh, and we can call them what we want, but uh, any measures that quantitatively also puts, and I use the term deliberately, quantitatively breaks uh, surges in, in private borrowing are also to be looked at very seriously. If we're not going to reexamine the uh, kind of monetary policy under the broader mandate of financial stability at a time right after crisis, if we can't re-examine that now and say, okay, beyond the control of short-term interest rates, that's great and fine, but as I will argue later, short-term interest rates only do so much. Uh, you uh, need to look closely at other instruments that are more directly connected to cycles in lending. 